Late in 2004, so like 14 years ago, ugh, an Aaron Forsyth article went up on the mothership. First, it explained that going forward, Legacy would be called Legacy, which is kind of funny to think about, but that's not the point. The real meat of the column centered around the idea of textless cards, their origin story, and the philosophies behind which cards should get the textless treatment and why. Two months earlier, a textless terror featuring art evoking the original terror from Alpha was spoiled in Magic Arcana. It was sweet. I, I don't really know what else to say, you know? I loved it then, and I love it now. As the story goes, Aaron's original pitch was for textless cards, with designs based on how he formatted his own colorful playtest proxies, to be included in unhinged packs. The idea was well received, but it was ultimately not used in unhinged, which I think we can all agree is for the best because those John Avon lands are gorgeous. Anyway, they were used as part of the player rewards program eventually, which is a thing that doesn't exist anymore. Basically, WotC used to send you cards as an incentive to play in sanctioned tournaments. Your DCI number had a corresponding address so they knew where to send you cards. It was pretty sweet! Jason, our intrepid young animator, has only been playing Magic for a couple of years, and when I explained to him what Player Rewards was in the prep for this video, he was floored. I can't blame him, it was a pretty cool promotion, but that said, at the time, I didn't have a good answer for why it doesn't exist anymore. I think I do now, though. The first wave of textless cards went out in winter 2007. The standard sets back then were all of Mirrodin Block, 8th Edition, and Champions of Kamigawa. So all these cards were standard legal, which was nice, and you got two random ones in the mail at a time. I speak from experience. I'm old. The only awkward thing about this cycle is that it's kind of uneven. Oxidize was a $5 uncommon during its time at standard because the original Mirrodin Block was obnoxiously good. So getting an Oxidize in the mail was pretty sweet. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you had Reciprocate, a card from the then brand new Champions of Kamigawa expansion. Reciprocate is bad. <laughs> the other three cards you could get were Mana Leak, Terror, and Fireball, and it's cool to have one of the five cards be from the latest set, but Reciprocate sucks. At the end of the day, though, it was free promos. Whether you got mailed five bucks or no bucks, it cost you nothing. It was just a little added bonus for playing in lots of tournaments. Sure, the exact wording on Fireball is a little complicated, but nine times out of ten, it's just Blaze anyway, so why not? The first batch of textless promos went over pretty well, so they made more the following year. This time, they didn't even bother trying to make a mono-white spell. By the way, you might have noticed that all of these cards are instants or sorceries. That is by design. In Aaron Forsyth's original announcement, he mentioned that since the cards didn't have any information on them, they shouldn't hang out on the battlefield. I'm torn on this logic. It's sound, I guess, but these cards are gorgeous. They probably could have gotten away with a textless Tarmogoyf, or a textless Dark Confidant. Maybe they should have given all the invitational cards the textless treatment. I don't know. Newcomers Lightning Helix and Putrefy did get the textless treatment, which is brilliant. I mean, ugh, original Ravnica was so sweet. Okay, I know this is gonna sound weird, but back in the day, Putrefy was like the absolute nutter butters. I can't really explain that, you just had to be there. And Lightning Helix still resonates. They're both simple, straightforward spells that work in textless form perfectly. Perfect execution of the idea. Joining them were Hinder, Giant Growth, Pyroclasm, and Zombify, four classic effects that ensured that these pieces of cardboard would stay relevant after their life in standard. Did I mention that these player reward bundles each came with a premium card? This batch came with a Hypnotic Spectre that got the new card frame, a DCI watermark in the text box, but retained the old school Douglas Schuler art, and the fourth wall shattering Samuel Taylor Coleridge flavor text. As a teenager who came up through the game casting plenty of hippies, this batch of player rewards cards was perfect. For the next batch, they even made the foil card textless. Nothing says, you have displeased the almighty, like a big old crater in the ground, am I right? This batch also got to cheat a little bit on rarities, so before this batch, it was only commons and uncommons that got the textless treatment. But this time around, they featured Psionic Blast from Time Spiral. Psionic Blast was Time Shifted, which was its own purple rarity that was only used in Time Spiral. Time Shifted cards popped up once in a pack, so Time Spiral packs were 10 commons, three uncommons, a rare, and a time shifted card. So time shifted cards were kind of rare-ish. Time shifted cards were straight up reprints from any old frame set, so scourging back from Magic's history. And the rarities they pulled from were all over the place. Sometimes your time shifted card was a chroma. Sometimes it was Squire. Psionic Blast was uncommon in Alpha Beta Unlimited, which justifies the rarity cheat for that card, I guess. But in all seriousness, it was cool to see so many Psionic Blasts in circulation after a decade plus absence of the card. The rest of the cards in this batch were okay, but a little underwhelming. Disenchant and Mortify were cool, Condemn and Cruel Edict were eh, and Recollect, yeah. Recollect went a long way towards showing players just how not good regrowth actually was. 
Regrowth was unbanned in Legacy when the format became independent of Vintage, but it wasn't unrestricted in Vintage until 2013, which is a whole other can of worms we are not getting into right now. Following the precedent that Wrath of God set the year before, the 2008 Player Rewards bundle featured Damnation as the textless foil. This is the year the rest of the textless cards got a little more complex. Harmonize and Tidings are pretty straightforward, but Corrupt, Incinerate, and Ponder have a ton of text. And then there's Mana Tithe, which... why? <laughs> I mean, I love Mana Tithe as a card, don't get me wrong, but Mana Tithe is a complete blowout. This is important because these cards are not very beginner-friendly. For example, none of them say what the card actually does on them. Aaron Forsyth acknowledged this concern in his 2004 column, citing that unreadable cards aren't new and that players play with foreign cards too. There are a couple problems with this specific dismissal of the issue. Foreign cards have text. <laughs> this is an important distinction. Foreign cards want to tell you what the card does. Textless cards only want to tell you what the card is. A less charitable read on the textless cards is that they are a form of gatekeeping, a deliberate obfuscation of magic, if you will. If you're an enfranchised player, these cards are no problem. If you're making the jump from kitchen table to Friday Night Magic for the first time, they are forbidding and exclusionary. Just imagine your opponent taps out for a morsel hoarder and you mana tithe it. They reflexively pick up the mana tithe to read it because they've been seeing new cards all night and realize by now that they just have to read everything. There's no text on it! <laughs> they ask you what it does and you tell them. It counters your spell unless you pay one mana. Assuming they know how the stack works and what countering a spell even is, their next decision is whether or not to take you at your word. That is the kind of environment textless cards create. Also, players typically have to go out of their way to get foreign cards. The textless cards were mailed to your door. The thing that really exposes the false equivalency here is that players enfranchised enough to seek out foreign cards aren't playing them in tournaments where they're rubbing elbows with newbies. They're playing in PTQs. Since there was such a low barrier to get player rewards cards, they were everywhere. The logic behind the equivalency is sound, I suppose, but once you start thinking about the differences and where the cards ultimately end up and why, the comparison makes less and less sense. This is a cryptic command. It is one of the coolest magic cards of the past 15 years and certainly ranks among the most powerful. To this day, cryptic command is the spark plug for spirited debates on the viability of control in modern, because the archetype leans so heavily on cryptic command. Cryptic Command has four modes, and you can use any two you like. This means there are six different ways to cast a Cryptic Command. This is the foil for the 2009 crop of Player Rewards cards. Okay, so here's the thing about textless cards. They look really nice. You're sacrificing the words on the card because the payoff is that the picture that occupies the entire card instead looks good. To me, this is the logic behind the unhinged basics. The unglued basics were novel, but the unhinged ones are, without hyperbole, true works of art. The art itself takes up all the space on the cards, but it doesn't even register because the payoff is just there. Now let's look at the textless cryptic command art. It is some sort of amphibian creature conjuring a doodle from a middle schooler's textbook. We threw out four bullet points worth of text for this? Why exactly did this happen? I mean, imagine the mana tithe scenario, but swap out your mana tithe for a cryptic command. Then imagine what happens when you cast another textless cryptic command in that same game, but with two different modes. Textless cryptic command marks the point where the textless player rewards cards went from being indifferent towards new players to being downright hostile. If you disagree with this assessment, please find a new player, cast a textless cryptic command against them, and sit back and just let them work through their thoughts aloud. It'll be really funny right until you remember that this is a thing that happened a lot at Friday Night Magic's in 2008 and beyond. There were some bizarre choices among the non-foil promos too. Blightning, Terminate, and Rampant Growth all make sense to me because they're simple cards and they're good. Nameless Inversion, on the other hand, has a lot more relevant text than you probably remember. I'm genuinely curious how often a textless Nameless Inversion was able to successfully kill a Baneslayer Angel, even though Nameless Inversion is an instant that's also every creature type, and Baneslayer Angel has protection from demons and dragons. Flame Javelin and Unmake have simple enough effects, but whew, boy is that hybrid mana symbol clunky. These cards really benefited from the reminder text on the original versions. The player rewards batches continued like this for two more years. Half the cards were simple and could easily be expressed to an opponent in their entirety. The other half of the cards were of moderate complexity, usually containing a one-off mechanic from the set it was from, and therefore benefiting from reminder text that textless cards can't allow for. The last two foil player rewards cards were Lightning Bolt and Day of Judgment, cards that make perfect sense as textless cards, but ultimately, these cards, while mostly gorgeous, have the potential to be really harmful to a game trying to acquire new players. That's why they were discontinued. 
My honest stance on these is that while it's fun to clown on Cryptic Command and dissect why on earth you would ever make that a textless card, the truth is that it's really nice that WotC took some swings in the name of making their player base happy. I view the textless spell initiative as a failure, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate what organized play tried to accomplish with them. But maybe you feel differently. Maybe you still play with textless cards to this day. If you do, let us know in the comments, and if not, let us know which ones look coolest to you, and don't forget to like and subscribe, because this is all I have left. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.